Well, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, for me, the uh, I'm going to be presenting on uh, uh, the details of goaltending, try to incorporate them into your practices, and of course, the mental side of the game. And if, uh, <laughs> if anyone's uh, seen our season this year with the Cape Breton Eagles, uh, the mental side was, was massive for these two young goaltenders uh, with a struggling season that we had. So, um, yeah, I just want to touch base on this type of stuff. And if there's any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out here. Um, one big thing for me, incorporating goaltenders in practice, um, so important. We don't want them to be forgotten. A lot of the times, I know when I was growing up and playing, we'd just kind of uh, shot, 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 just be there, stop the puck. But it can create some bad habits and uh, not great for confidence as well. So try to incorporate things that are going to allow you to uh, have the goalies create good habits like game situations. So their purpose, having a purpose drives the behavior in the net. So here we go. Hopefully this works. All right, guys. Uh, there we go. So yeah, incorporating goalies into practice. Um, my being fortunate enough to uh, to be a part of the, uh, the Calgary Flames organization for those two years, um, the biggest takeaway I, I got from that as a coach was to not reinvent the wheel and keep things simple. Um, just my my favorite time at the rink was to always go watch the other teams' morning skates and watch their goalie coaches interact with their goaltenders. And um, I always assume that you know I need all these bells and whistles and things to make it look flashy, but. Uh, the biggest takeaway and the reassurance for me as a coach, um, keeping it simple. If you're focusing on one aspect, may not look fancy to uh, someone in the stands, but if you're really focusing on one aspect, really focus on it. Doesn't doesn't have to be this fancy fancy drill. If it's uh, you know tracking tracking the puck, it's, it's as simple as tracking into your gloves. And I'll show you some video as well here. But um, with the pre ice routine. I, I know with minor hockey, you don't, you have your 50 minute or 60 minute block of ice. Um, so we have to get yourself ready prior to getting on the ice. So with goaltenders, it's so important to, you know, having that tennis ball, getting the mind and the eyes trained uh, to get yourself ready, get focused, focused on the, uh, on your practice to make sure you get the most out of it. Right. Um, really focusing on details for me is huge. We have goaltenders that uh, you know make a save in practice and then have a bad habit of not finishing their play. So sometimes it's inevitable when coaches don't allow enough time for them to finish their play. But if we have a chance to create that good habit and maybe delay a drill a bit so they can finish their finish their play like a game situation, then <clears throat> then that's really going to help. Um, again, getting back to keeping things simple, uh, tracking edge work, beating plays on the feet. These are three non-negotiables of goaltending. I'm a big believer in uh, every goal is a bit different and you have to kind of coach to their, their strengths and their weaknesses. And there's not one way to be a goaltender. Um, but at, at the same time, these, these areas are the ones that really you need to, to make sure you're successful at, at any level, whether it be minor hockey or major junior or professional hockey. Um, next one, creating game habits. Um, this is huge for me in, in practice and in goalie ice when I have a chance to be on the ice with just, just goaltenders. Um, having drills that allow them to do it like a game situation. Uh, that's that's so important and I always harping on the goalies to do that. Um, when there's downtime in practice, we need a plan. That That's huge. You see a lot in minor hockey. If teams are skating or doing a breakout or working on some neutral zone stuff, like goalies are just standing there and, and not doing anything. So they have uh, most most associations now have a, a goalie guy, um, or maybe you can uh, um, have an assistant coach designated for those times to to have your goaltender uh, get some work in. Uh, and most of these goaltenders, if not all of them, have been to some uh, good goalie coaching throughout the HRM. A lot of good ones up there, um, and I'm sure they've they've adapted some good quality habits and routines. Uh, that they've gotten in their goalie practice that they could incorporate into their downtime as a uh, as a goalie when when it's uh, when it's you know not much work going on and then lastly here that concentrate on quality reps from proper muscle memory 
we want to make sure when we're doing things, whether it be on the ice or in the gym or whatever, you're, you're, you're concentrating on doing it right. Um, don't just go through the motions, do it with urgency, do it with those good habits, doing it with the tracking and edge work type type stuff. stuff. And uh, that's going to help carry it over into games. So for pre-ice, um, again, it's so important, um, not only to get your eyes and your, and your, your body prepped, but to get your mind prepped. And for, for goaltenders, um, it's, it's so important to have that mindset. And, uh, uh, when I was, when I was playing in university, I, I always remember my coach telling me, uh, there's a book by Martin Brodeur and he, he had this competition he had it in his own mind against himself that he'll never allow two goals in a practice in a row. That's his mindset. So if he, he makes a mistake, lets one in, getting the reset right away is so important um, to allow you to, to create that good competition level and not only practice, but in games. Um, good goalies hate to get scored on. And uh, that's, that's, that's a kind of trait that you need uh, in that. So when we look at goaltenders and scouting goaltenders, uh, we want to see them play a bad game and how they respond to the next one, or they let in a bad goal and how do they respond to the next shift? It's, it's really important to have that, that, uh, that good mentality. And, and for goaltenders, it's, uh, we don't spend enough time or even players or just kids in general, we don't spend enough on the mental aspect of life and, and, uh, and also in sport. Cause it's a lot of the games played between the way games are won and lost between the years, a lot of the time. So, uh, if you really try to focus and get, get yourself prepared mentally, it's, it's so important. So getting your eyes and hands focused to help with tracking and visualization. That's so huge. Even uh, like with, with the, like I uh, was watching some seminars through Hockey Canada or talking to other pro goalie coaches. And um, that's, that's the one thing is the tracking and keeping your chin tucked in, getting good visualization and tracking on the puck. Um, it is so important. And it may sound simple, but even the top dogs uh, in the NHL are still struggling with this aspect. And, and it's, it's something that we can take care of off the ice or at home while you're just bouncing a ball off the, off the, off the side of the house or whatever it is. Like it doesn't take much to, to focus on this little thing. So um, you know, I'll get into some video here with you guys with that as well. And starting with a dynamic warm up. See a lot of guys just, uh, Sitting there, sitting there doing static warm-ups and kind of that's just kind of telling your body to slow down a bit. So getting guys moving um, to warm up to activate the body and get the heart rate going is, is a proper way to get get goalies and, and players into the right mindset and get, get your body prepped for uh, jumping on the ice and getting involved in your practice or your games. Now we all talk about goal, goalies being a, a bit different and uh, it's uh, anyone that knows me would would testify to that, but um, this may look silly, but it, it's 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 a part of uh, Hellebuck's pregame routine, and uh, probably ninety five percent of the boys um, playing pro hockey or junior hockey are, are doing something similar to this, just to do some visualization, visualization, and then getting your eyes and mind trained and ready to go. May look <laughs> a bit bizarre, but is what it takes to get, get him focused and ready to go for his games. So, yeah, just a quick shot of that, but um, everyone has their own routine, but with things like this, it's, it's very, very important. Like it may, it may look silly, but it's, it's something to get his, his eyes trained. Uh, he's visualizing plays happening on the ice. Um, it's, it's a lot of good stuff there. And if you can try to get uh, your young goalies to start doing something like this, it doesn't have to be out in public so everyone can see it, but um, even finding a spot on the wall in the dressing room and kind of picking out the corners and just kind of getting your eyes moving from one point to the other. Like, so in a game where the eyes go, the body's going to follow as a goalie. And that's, we need your eyes to go first in situations and, and that's going to help train it. Oh, sorry. So this is uh, one of our goalies with the Eagles this year. I'm going to get back to the, the, the mental side of things for goaltending. Um, Remy and, and uh, Roach were two 
very good 17 year old goaltenders in this league. Uh, um, but when, when you're on a, a, the team that was struggling the way we were, it, it's, it's tough coming to the rink every day, knowing that, uh, uh, you, you don't have a great chance of winning. So, um, it took a lot for us to work together and have that mindset to say, listen, control what you can control and play your game and don't worry about anything else. And it's easier said than done when you're losing by five, six, seven, eight goals. But um, this guy right here, it's I, I can't say enough about his character and his preparation because if you walked in the building and there was no scoreboard, you wouldn't know if it's one nothing or 10 nothing. He's going to compete right through. Um, and Roots the same way. Um, these guys are are great quality young goaltenders, great people, but they they put a lot of work into the preparation to get themselves ready, and also put put the emphasis on uh, the right things, um, the stats and things that at this point didn't matter. It's just showing your character and showing showing um, that your teammates you're not going to give up on them. And it 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 it, uh, it for scouting wise, I've talked to a number of NHL scouts and every single guy said about these both these kids um they're the way they handle themselves on the ice in in some tough losses was incredible like their character was outstanding so um it's it's not easy for sure but if you can come to the rink and, and know as a goaltender you can't score goals um you can only try to prevent them so um if you can kind of have that mindset of you know really focusing on what you have to focus on um it, it's huge so for rem uh before every practice and you see a lot of goalies do this before every game but it's important to practice like you play so um every practice every game these guys got into a routine and just something simple here watch how he uh sorry watch how he catches that ball in front of him okay you're we talk about goaltenders catching everything in front and not having it back here you want to really make sure you, you do that and do it when you're doing your 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 uh, warm-ups like this as well because everything's in front and he leans into it okay that's that's the, that's the idea we want on the ice so you're trying to incorporate that into practice and when goalies you have two goalies make it fun for them they're a team within a team and these guys got along great so try to work together and doing some pre-ice stuff um healthy competition on the ice pushing each other really fortunate to have two guys that got along so well So goalie ice, um, and again, I know with minor hockey, you're, you don't always have the luxury of having that extra ice time for goalies. We usually had about 20 minutes prior to every practice to get out and do our thing. Um, but having said that, uh, you could you could structure your practices, coaches, uh, by maybe taking the top circles down for the goalies and the rest of the ice for you guys to work on whatever you have to work on to start of the practice. Um, again, designating an assistant coach or having a goalie person come out to help um you really want to just get them get them confident get them going activate the legs and hands uh again be efficient with detailed habits uh tracking finishing play sharp and controlled movements repetition and muscle memory and get confident feeling with pucks so you want to you want to jump into the first drill and have it a you know the two on over two on ones it's you want to give them a bit of goalie time um for your first drill to make sure they feel the puck uh feel confident and um, yeah, warm them up and get them ready for practice. So again, if you don't take the top circles down or doing starting with a full ice drill, just make sure it's a shot from you know top circles um, and let the goalie feel the puck for the first few reps and then, and then kind of go from there. So again, when uh, with the tracking concept here, if you watch Delhi, receive these pucks. Um, again, everything's in front of his body. We're trying to uh, incorporate, um, as you can see, his eyes have to be on the glove. So a glove in front of his body, like a good body position, and then having that glove in front is gonna allow him to make that save and see it go into his glove. Sometimes if goalies make saves back here, it's gonna open you up a bit more and you got to turn your head a bit. But if you're making a save with the glove in front, I can lean into it and kind of, uh, if there is a rebound, I'm already in motion to make the, make the next save or get into the next movement. I can get this going. You're seeing with the blocker side, I'll show the blocker side here too. 
with Roach leaning into it, having good eyes, watching it go into the corner. Here, catch in front, eyes down, up. Everything going into the glove. Same with the blocker here. See how he follows his play, creating that good habit. Rolls the wrist, hopefully put it in the corner. And if you can see here, his eyes directly on that puck and rotating his body into the puck. So again, everything's in front of him. Very simplistic, but so important just to get the, the mind and the hands activated to start the practice. Very similar to that tennis ball work. Okay, incorporating those details are so, so important. Sorry. So another one for say top circles down here, guys. Um, in this situation, uh, we have a, a shooter and you can, X1 could be X1 and X2. Um, you can just skate over uh, as, the, as the play goes on here. But all we're doing here is the goalie starting on his post, eyes are in the corner as if there's a player or a pass coming up here. Um, you could also have the other goaltender if they're strong enough to make the pass to the X1 up here as well. Um, goalie makes a save into a butterfly, rotates into that puck. And then as he's rotating, he's executing a good push to his post and pops out for the second shot for a tracking type, type finish here. So uh, again, a very simplistic drill, so many details involved here. We'll watch it real quick. Oops. So here's the actual setup for that drill. So he starts on his post, push out, tracks into it, push out, makes the save. Same thing. Rotates into that puck, pushes out. Tracks into it. And again, the guy missed the pot and missed the net. But what does he do? He finishes his play. It's so, so important. So again, a few details here. John Root starts on his post. Strong push out. Okay. Eyes first, set his feet, rotates. See how he rotates into that puck and he's already executing that save going, going the other way. Sorry about that. The wrong button. So when he's making that save up top and he's pushing to his post, this back leg is already under his shoulder and he's pushing that post, getting nice and square and then getting out top crease. So here, push, rotate in, good stick, puts the puck in the corner, pushes out, gains his depth, nice and square. Same thing, other side, stick on puck, finishes, pushes out, miss the net. Okay, got to finish my play like in a game. Very simple drill. You can have your assistant coach or a goalie coach do this prior to your practices. And uh, it's going to get the goalies moving correctly, tracking, and um, getting those eyes, eyes and hands activated. Another good in tight one. Um, after that first one, we're working a lot of plays in games. You see a lot of goals or chances generated from down low beyond the goal line, nice in tight plays. So if we if a goalie can beat a play on his feet, 100% let's beat our play on the feet because we're bigger, we're faster, we're stronger on our feet, we take up more room. But in games, there are going to be times in tight where we have to slide and uh, and get that lead leg down and close the holes in tight. So we have to work on that aspect as well. So here we're going to look at this drill. Goalie starts here. Butterfly slide over to the puck where the, the coach or the player is here in tight shot, okay? And then the player is gonna go around and then attack this side. So we did a little different version with uh, Ruch and Remy here, but again, there's different vari variations of this drill, but again, it's still focusing on the, on the right concepts. Here, down, makes a save, tight to his post, Post to post, and again, finish your play. Create those good habits. Same thing, Rem on this side. Make that save. Make sure you see that puck down low. And there's there's something um, really, really focus on 
with with any goalie I work with, whether it be uh, novice age or U9 age, uh, right up to these guys. If there's a loose puck in front of your net, jump on it. In a game, we want you to do that. So let's co- incorporate those good habits and good details in practice as well. Because if you're just letting it sit there to practice, you're not going to be as hungry in games to do the things the right way there. So again, watching this drill one more time. Lots of good habits here. See the puck, tight to your post, play within inside your post. Good control, keep those hands in front. Same this side, execute that save. Watch the puck behind the net, cover the puck right away. Okay, so those are two simple but uh, effective warm-up drills where the uh, a coach could be doing this while the rest of the team is uh, focusing on something that doesn't necessarily need a goalie. Or even if you're doing something where you're using one end, uh, you can alternate the goalies um, through that and one goalie is with you and then switch it off and go down the other end. So in practice, this is a, this is a big one for me. And um, it's, it's just so important that they feel a part of it, right? And not just a, a target. Um, you want to be able to add drills that allow your goalies to finish their play and fight for rebounds. Um, like I said, in practice, you want to you want to make sure you you have as much game like not only for the goalie but for the players. It's game like mentality, game like effort, game like uh, structure to help incorporate that. When you get into the game, it's going to be much easier. Um, another good one here, with especially with uh, as you get up in age. Um, yeah, Puck handling is such a huge uh, asset for the goalies when we're looking at goaltenders. Um, a lot of the goalies are similar, similar these days um, in terms of talent level and structure within their net. Uh, adding the puck handling element is massive. Uh, I have the uh, fortune enough to work with Colton Ellis in the, in the summers, um, and he's, he's the hardest working guy I've probably ever worked with. And um, he's, there's a guy about details. He's always early to the rink. He's doing his prep. Um, he, he always wants, wants to be on the ice and get better. And when I had the conversation with St. Louis last summer, um, their biggest thing was like, Hey, uh, let's, let's get him on his backhand working on his, his puck play. Um, so every, every single practice that we had together, uh, we spent about 15 minutes working on just the, the, the backhand as well as just forehand, uh, puck handling situations, get him more confident, uh, especially at the pro level. Uh, so if we can uh, incorporate a, uh, a drill uh, with puck handling um, that allows a goalie to be engaged and feel like a part of the start of the drill, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's huge. And same thing with being goalies. I know goalies are a team within a team. I think being goalies are a team within a team as well, because um, if you guys can have the being goalies on the same page with puck handling situations, it's going to want to allow your D to have easier breakouts. Um, and feel almost like a third defenseman back there trying to help out your, your defenseman and uh, change the other team's forecheck, basically, when, when you have a good puck handling goaltender. So here's an example of uh, finishing your play, a drill where you can just make one minor change to the, to the warm-up. Uh, i sure you guys are familiar to it with the high-low drill where uh, the red in this corner We'll be going low around these two cones and shoot top circles. Uh, the black one here comes up around and usually comes around and shoots from this side. But if you do the high one and add a delay, which in a game is uh, good for your players as well, because uh, uh, change of momentum, uh, tight turns, edge work, add a little delay, may add one or two seconds to allow that goalie Maybe that rebound went over here somewhere. Make that save, finish his play, and get his feet set <clears throat> for this shot coming through here. So this is going at both ends. Same thing on this side. Low, coming up this way. High, around, delay, back down. So just one little change um, can make a huge difference um, for your goaltender and allow them to create good habits and good uh, – good consistent habits for, for uh, uh, carrying that over to their game situations. Um, when I was in uh, Adirondack and Stockton uh, as a goalie development coach with Calgary, we, my, my main job was about 90% of the time in the American League and then about 10% of the time I'd be 
work with prospects all over North America and then uh, scouting for the NHL draft. And um, what one of the biggest, biggest things with the, the coach I had down there, Ryan Husko, who's now the assistant with Calgary, um, he was so good. We'd meet every morning as a staff uh, about 6.30 in the morning, our day would start. Um, and we would go over practice. And he leaned heavily on me to say, okay, how can we make this better for goaltenders? So to have coaches that are are goalie friendly and uh, no, they're not just uh, you know back at target, it, it really, really helps. And I know the goalies appreciate it and I appreciate it. Um, it with, our, with our guy in Cape Breton here now, Chad Cass, he's a phenomenal coach, great person. And um, the way he, he uh, asks input to make sure his, his drills are phenomenal for skill development and things like that. And he really wants the goalies to, to get something out of it as well. So having those opportunities to work with good coaches, I'm, I'm really grateful for that because it allows your goaltenders to create those good habits and, and you know just practice the right way. Here's another situation here where it's very game-like and it will allow your your goalies to um, play a game-like situation. So um, coaches here uh, just provide a little bit of token pressure on X1. Uh, X1 leaves with a puck. He can go below if the coach is high, but if the coach is low, he can go above him. He attacks the net down low. So it's an in-tight play for a goalie where you're working on your structure, maybe your RBH mode, maybe your overlap, making sure you have good depth, good, good crease management there. That at X stands net front okay he's he's standing he's waiting there x2 is going to fire one up the wall to the d okay he's going to walk the line and shoot okay so we have a screen in front so there's another aspect of the game where goalies have to work through traffic it's not always a, a straight line and you always get to see the puck you got to fight for your sight lines and find pucks so he gets that shot on goal he finishes his play once he finishes his play x1 leaves x2 gives him a pass and these guys go one-on-one -on -one down this end so same thing's going on in this corner over here but uh, again there's so much good game-like um, habits in this one where you're working on down low you're working on traffic and screens gaining your ground um, and then working on a one-on-one -on -one situation where uh, you know it really it's a very realistic situation in the game so another good one that you can work on allow yourself to create those good habits not only for goalies but for players you want to take away sight lines of the goalies um the guy going up the ice wants to drive drive wide d having good gaps like a lot of good little habits to start start a maybe your second drill of the day that could allow everyone being engaged there and then here's the puck handling piece of it um whenever possible incorporate goaltenders playing the puck and drill so you can either dump it on net or a rim of puck along the boards. And <clears throat> these are the aspects that can help the goaltender in, in, be engaged early in the drill and help them gain confidence with puck play. Because you know what, puck play is, is so, uh, such a huge part of the game. Like I said, like when we're scouting guys, like is he an asset back there? Is he, is he uh, you know, a liability back there? So. Uh, we're not looking for million dollar plays. We're working, looking for the dollar plays where it's just simple little bump plays, simple passes to your D, um, things like that. So uh, if you can get your goalies incorporated into those drills to start, it's great. And here's an example. When we were in uh, California, um, we always did this in morning skate. But um, I, I asked, like I said, the coach would always just, to start out, we were just dumping bucks here. And I just asked Husk, I said, hey, is, it, is there any way that we could start the drill instead of dumping pucks here? Could we rim one in? Or dump it on net, he bumps it. It's perfect, let's go with that. And it, uh, it became a part of our morning routine. Uh, allowed the goalie to get his head up, uh, make the simple play. So the D touches up, back pedals, coach rims one in. He may split or he may come and pick it up behind the net. And then the D are coming down nice and low. I mean, sorry, the forwards are coming down nice and low, makes the pass, comes up, regroup, two on one. Uh, same thing going both ends. So gets everyone flowing, gets every the feet are moving for the forwards, uh, creating good habits of coming low to support your D, D getting that card, um, supporting your goalie, and goalie making good decisions uh, with the puck. So 
And you, a big part of that is communication too with the and, and D's and goalies. Uh, you got to talk to each other. Um, too many times we, we've seen goalies and D have miscommunication and it just causes a lot of problems. So <clears throat> it's very important to work on these aspects. And this is one when you have some, um, like say forward and D split. Um, this one we used a lot and it, it, it's very smooth when it works well. It's, it's not very smooth when it doesn't, but it, what it takes, muscle memory and repetition is really gonna help. So we have a coach, preferably with one puck. Okay, coach is here, he rims it in, both D back pedal. So we work on a split a lot. We don't, if, if the goalie can receive it here, there's no need for that D to come back here. Be an option here, be an option here. And we have a four checker. So if the four check, we tell them to come into the middle and then pick a side. So if he takes away D1, obviously the goalie has to have his head up, make a good pass to D2. They come out. D1 would come to the middle. D1 comes out too, makes a pass to him. Good support play. Gives it up to the coach, rims it again. Next two go. So again, we're out. We have two or three four checkers in line, so they don't get tired. But we have a few guys in there, either coming straight at the goalie, the D1 or D2, and that just ha it makes the goalie make proper decisions, right? If we're we have the we use the up and over. So whatever side the puck gets rimmed on is up. Whatever side the puck is opposite to the rim is over. Or we could tell the D just to leave it. Uh, or the telegoli to leave it, or D picks it up. But in this situation, it's either up and over. If I'm rimming it this way, and the D is reading, the pressure is coming on that side, goalie gets it, okay, up, give it over to him. The over guy comes in the middle, support, here we go. Same thing if I'm rimming it this side, and the D is reading, the pressure is coming on this side, it's okay, over, and we push it over here, we get it that way. So if you can have... Um, a breakout plan. And again, this, just, this doesn't happen in one practice. This happens over a number of practices, consecutive times to get in and make sure it works properly. So in a game, it's uh, it's smooth. There's confidence from both our forwards and D and uh, so our D and goalie sword, sorry. And um, yeah, it's gonna help with the mindset for the goalies uh, moving forward. So it might be a bit advanced for some of the younger crew, but in the meantime, you can always do things like this as well. Um, just have the goalie start behind the net. And um, sometimes if you're short on practice, like I said, if you have a 50 minute hour, you could have one goalie here and one goalie here and have two people ringing pucks in. So receives it, hard pass. You wanna work on that elbow up, work over, okay? Up and over type drills. Like I said, if we have, if you had two goalies going, you just obviously do the up option, but then you could switch the other side and do over, elbow up, make the play. So I, as a coach in the corner here, um, <clears throat> we went over this quite a bit to start. Um, there's the four check option. He's reading it. We'd start this every every single practice to get to get involved in this. So reads it, check, just token pressure by the four checker. Good read, good push, simple plays, and our D will uh, be thankful that they're not going back to receive that puck. And you beat one four checker right away there. So with those little habits and details, um, as a as a goalie and a goalie coach, you really want to make sure you, you incorporate that confidence in the mental side. Like we're going to make mistakes back there, as we've seen in the NHL playoffs a few times, with guys uh, making puck handling mistakes and ultimately causing goals, but. Again, that's where the mental side comes in where, okay, how are you going to respond to that? How are you going to, how are you going to respond to the situation um, where uh, you make a bad play, make a mistake, and then you turn it over? But the only way to get better at things is you fail at them and, and just keep going. So, again, get, trying to gain as much confidence as possible uh, with the puck handling aspect it is huge for, for goaltender. So, even for the younger kids, so you're looking at U9, U11, the, um, even our U13s, it's uh, we got our, go our goalies going out and stopping the puck this year. Um, U9, 11 is a little tougher, but at least we could, when they have time and practice, they could be working on uh, puck handling or making passes or things like that just to kind of get them used to it or at home, uh, getting used to it. 
uh, handling the puck and making making good uh, bump plays or passes. So downtime. Um, and again, it's uh, shouldn't be much downtime in a in a 50 minute 60 minute practice. Um, we want to make sure you have a plan in place for the goalies to be productive and active. Um, so, like I said, most goalies work with a goalie coach nowadays. Um, they would have skating work, crease work, uh, post exit type drills that they could be doing um, while other things are going on in your practice. So, so they're getting something out of it um, instead of just standing there and watch, watching the the breakouts or something like that. Um, here's here's some stuff where I don't travel with the uh, the Eagles uh, anymore. It's said too busy with my own two boys and other other work commitments. So I'm, I do home practices and home games, but we've incorporated a routine for them that they do on the ice as soon as they get uh, on the road for a road trip, uh, morning skate or practice uh, to do these edge work type drills. And then we'll have uh, Chris Culligan, well, he knows the two drills that I'd like to start with and the goals like to start with. And while well, Maddie and uh, Chad have, um, Something else going on. Chris will take the goal and get them prepped for the rest of the practice. So, here's an example of uh, Roach and Remy's warm up drills, working on their edges, using their heels here, good posture, good structure, hands in front, now using the toes, going backwards. Again, very simple, but gaining confidence on their edges. So now they're just using one foot as opposed to two. And then here's one where it's called tall C's, holding that edge, eyes first. Okay, making sure you have confidence on your edges, holding your edges. This is another one where he's rotating his shoulders and eyes into the puck. Same thing, rotate, good opening up, nice and square, nice and controlled. Very, very simple. And then we get into crease work. Eyes first, strong push, strong stop. Good details of the stick on his post. See how his head moves first? It leads the way. Same thing here. We're going to shuffles in the middle. Nice and controlled, nice and square. Good details. Now he's simulating saves. You're getting up proper leg. Make the save, lean into it. Back leg gets up first. Push with that back leg and then post exit. From your post, getting out of your post position, top crease to make save. So I'm sure your goalies have hundreds of drills that they could do within their crease uh, for these types of things. Um, very important to utilize them as much as possible because this creates good game habits. It's it's you're you're playing the game in your mind right now. Uh, when they're doing this, is another mindset type thing for the goalies. Ten is a, a game situation like. Pretend like those see Remy was doing the down and then up with the proper leg pushing across. Get them to visualize a puck coming in, making that save, and then recovering to that rebound. And that's really going to help with uh, with uh, their their game situation and even in practices to get that compete level and battle level going. But again, it looks very simple, but it's 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 so important. And, and uh, these guys know that when there's downtime in their morning skates or or practices on the road. Um, they know that this is the stuff they got to be doing and, and uh, getting getting better in those areas. <clears throat> Here's one that we really enjoy. And I know uh, uh, Chad with the Eagles, when he came in, he created a really good energy to start our practices. Um, once the guys were warmed up with a small area D, gets the battle level up, um, gets the energy going, gets the compete, like, Everything, it, it seemed, uh, the boys loved it. And they have a different small area game every day. And it, for, even for goalies, um, once they're warmed up, excellent, excellent for goalies. Game-like situations and competition, a great way to see where they are, uh, see they're at with their preparation for actual game play and for the practice. And set the tone for the practice. Or even at the end of practice, when they're tired to see, see where the competing battle level is. So trying to hold the goalies at a high standard in terms of competing battle level is, is so important. So. Not only for the players, but goalies. Small area games are awesome. Um, they're so good for for all that stuff I just mentioned, and it, I think it's something that uh, at any level we can incorporate in. Um, 
I know with our, our Pee Wee AAA team this year, um, I made the suggestion with uh, the, when the Chad came in, he started doing that. And it, it really made a, made a difference for, for our guys in terms of how they, the rest of their practices went. Um, it's, it's something that I, I think we did create that, that good mindset to, to start the right way. And sometimes you did at the end and, and guys were tired and it's almost like a, a hidden skate. Um, it's much more fun to do a, a hidden skate and they don't realize they're working so hard as opposed to, um, um, you know, just going for the line to line type thing, the old, old way of doing things. And then post practice, um, the, we call it the goalie club. We had a goalie club down in the, in the States and it was fun. We had the same shooters. Uh, for the most part, wanting to get involved because they liked working on their their game as well, right? So um, it's it's uh, something that something that's pretty uh, pretty fun, but at the same time, it's purposeful. Um, okay, I'll get to that question in one minute there. Um, so again, it creates a competition. Uh, detailed detailed habits. Um, you can also use the extra goalie for an added screen. Like I said earlier, like more like a game situation where the pucks are, you don't, they're not always visible. You got to find your sight lines, fight for your sight line, sight line. So it's a, it's a good added feature to your drill to add a goalie to it uh, as a screen. And then shooters can make or break your drills. Uh, make sure you choose wisely. I, I know there's certain guys that I uh, tend to stay away from because um, they're just going to mess around and then not, not really um, take it serious. Um, it's supposed to be fun, but I want to get something out of it as well. And shootouts with a purpose. Um, helps goalies learn to handle the pressure. I know shootouts nowadays is a big part of the game. Um, uh, so kind of working on that and not only, again, having fun with it and messing around, but uh, details and aspects that go along with the shootout situations. Like, and that's, again, the mindset and the mental side of the game, handling that pressure. Uh, working on your gap control as a goalie, working on being patient on your feet, working on the reads of, of the shooters in front of you. It's a, it's a fun way to finish, finish practice, but it's also very productive. So again, just a couple of videos here. <clears throat> but again, it's, it's a situation where it's off the rush. So he sets his feet past the middle, off the side, play finish your play every time simple but again you can work the shooters can be working on moving their feet as they shoot goalies can also be you know top crease good structure eyes first same thing the other side eyes first set his feet make the save no rebounds same thing push good track finishes play so with that um again they it almost comes second nature to these guys because they do it so often, but because they, they've created that good habit with proper repetition and muscle memory, um, just, you know, it's, you got to harp on them to continue to finish plays, um, create good habits and things like that. So, <clears throat> so uh, it's very important to, uh, to make sure you continue to, to focus and push with that, uh, with the good habits. So here's the same similar drill where it's a lateral pass, but we have the extra goalie in front. So he loses the sight line at some point. So we want to work on the goalie, find that sight line and making the save. So find it, get on that puck right away, set his feet top crease, same thing, loses it, finds it. So quick eyes here to find that puck. You have the other forward drive and after the rebound as well. Set feet. Make the save, track it, goes to the corner, finish your play. Eyes first. Good tracking again. Lots of good details and habits there. So, again, finishing the right way, having, having some confidence at the end of practice, uh, leaving the ice with a good mentality, and um, making sure you're, you know, in a good mindset, positive mind frame. Um, get ready for your for your next practice or game. So yeah, for me that's uh, 
kind of the areas I wanted to touch on. Um, again, making your goalies feel like they're a part of it, um, kind of tailoring drills that will allow them to, to have, um, you know, purposeful and meaningful practice time. And again, with the, getting your goalies kind of work prior to practice, to get them set up with the tennis ball work, even at home doing that. And um, um, yeah, incorporating the goalies as much as we possibly can into these practices and make sure they have good mindsets and a good mind frame for, for when the games, uh, practicing games are going to play, play out. So thanks, guys. Um, I did see a question there. Here, I don't know. Uh, we, did, we did have one that popped up there, uh, Scott, and thanks again for that. Um, yeah, this one was uh, so players can shoot pucks and stick handle in their driveway. Any suggestions as to what goalies can do at home to work on their game? Okay, well, yeah, it's great. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> we have a tendency with our goaltenders uh, with the, the U13. This year, just as an example, um, we had them uh, at home, whether it be with a parent or on their own, have a glove on, your goalie glove, or you don't even need your glove. Um, again, I talked about the tennis ball work, throwing the ball against the wall, catching it in front of you like it's a game situation. Um, same thing with the blocker. You can put the blocker on, throw it, rotate your wrist, put the pucks in the, or the ball in the corner, um, things like that. And also, um, just like the, the quick feet and plyometric type stuff, getting the more explosive power, because we really want goalies to focus on getting from point A to point B as quick as possible. So having that uh, plyometric work or the quick feet work going in your driveway can really, uh, also for players, um, really help them with that aspect. Perfect. Uh, we got a couple more coming in here right now, which is great. Um, just looking for some feedback here. Uh, suggestions or comments, Scott, with uh, or on young small goalie around the use of butterfly versus standing big. How to develop that skill but not abuse it? Yeah, it's a uh, um, see way too many small goaltenders at the U nine U eleven age where. Um, Butterfly, 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 as you, as you see on um, the NHL. And, um, um, you know, they're just not big enough to master mistakes at that size. So one drill we like to do with uh, the young goaltenders, it's called giving the good response. So um, you can even start at the blue line and have a coach do this um, to start because they can actually reach, reach the end of the, uh, raise the puck. But um, you can start with shooting a puck and if it's below the hips you challenge your goalie to make a save in a butterfly if it's above the hips you try to challenge them to see if they can stay on their feet and be patient and you'd be surprised with uh how many goalies cannot do this and it's um it's again training the mind and having that patience in your game where um once you get good at that you get five in a row move the move the puck in about four or five feet and then try it again and move it in and move it in and move it in uh, to the point where, you know, it's, it's impossible to make a, a read um, really close to you, but you just want to make sure you have good structure and good, good positioning for that. But uh, it's good to have the, the basics of the butterfly and um, um, yeah, the, the, your hand structure and your, where your head should be. But if you're going down on every single shot, especially as a young goalie, you're, you're going to, you know, lack success because uh, any kid that can shoot a puck high, it's just going to go over your shoulder and um, it's kind of creating a bad, bad habit and bad, uh, bad energy and vibe as a goaltender. So you can train them to be a bit more patient on their feet. Um, mind you, we don't want them staying on their feet for a low shot and just using their stick. You want to, you know, get into that mentality of making that save in a butterfly and then, working on getting up properly to make the next say point A to point B as quick as possible. So that would be my suggestion with doing that drill, kind of training your mind to be a bit more patient. So above the hips, stay on your feet, below the hips, go down, and then kind of get better at it as you go. Perfect. We got a big thank you there for that response. Um, it's just one that, uh, yeah, just came up in the chat. And I think we got this one uh, ahead of time as well, but uh should goalies be joining players in skating drills or should they be working mostly on goalie specific skating drills? 
That's a, that's a great question. Um, I love the fact that goalies are a part of the team. And I, I know if, you know, if guys are getting punished for a skate or, or doing some conditioning at the end as a skate, I like them being a part of it because the goalies have to be your best skaters on the ice. Um, um, yeah, they need great edge work. They need to be fluent in their skating. They need good cardio and conditioning. So they need conditioning. Um, having said that, they, during a practice, if there's if there's a, a bit of skating involved, like, um, it, it's not a bad thing. As long as they're doing the work within the crease, of like butterflies getting up proper leg, post to post work, anything within the crease, um, it's good. It's good conditioning. Um, but again, if it's a, it's a team um, skate or a team um, punishment, so to speak, after a bad effort. Uh, really feel like they should be a part of the team because they, they are uh, a big part of it. So I like, I like the goalies doing it with, with their teammates, but there have been times in practices where uh, the drill is more of a skating type flow type thing. And we just, I take the time with the goalies to do some more structural and, uh, and conditioning in that aspect. Perfect. There was another one that just came in. It was, uh, I guess if, if you're walking in, you're taking in, watching uh, your average minor hockey practice, uh, what would you say is your biggest pet peeve when it comes to, uh, when it comes to goalies taking, taking part in their average uh, minor hockey practice? Yeah, uh, for me, it would be the, the, um, like just the, like the, the shot after shot after shot where they're just a target and you don't give them any time to, to get up and move. And they just, it just becomes exhausting and mentally draining for these guys uh, where they're not, you're not allowing them to do their job correctly. And that, that's kind of, uh, yeah, that, that irks me a bit when, when these, and it, you know, it's in fairness to the code that's the way it was way back in the day, but now the game has changed a bit and uh, goalies are getting more attention uh, in terms of their teaching and um, coaching. So I just think if you can, again, if you can, allow a little bit more time in between shots. It's going to, it's going to not only make your goalie better, or it's going to make your team better because your goalie is a huge part of that. And you want to make sure they, they have success in these practices as well to carry over the games. Well, that's awesome. I think there was maybe one more here. Uh, we actually just had another one that just came in. Um, let me see if I can skim this one real quick. Uh, yeah, what type of conversations do you have with your club goalies if the team is having a poor effort and the score is starting to get up there? Yeah, lots of conversations this year. Uh, it what? was, uh, it's, uh, you know what? Um, I try in, in games to, to leave my goalies alone and do their thing. I don't want to be in their ear all the time. Um, sometimes you got to figure some things out on your own. Um, these tough situations are great learning opportunities. Uh, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It's a negative situation. How can I turn this into a positive? But um, the odd time I'd, I'd go in between periods, and just ask them how they're doing. Um, and not once did they ever want to come out of the nest. Sometimes cast would be like, hey, um, feel bad for them right now. Like, they're not playing bad, but we're getting bombarded here. What do you think? And you know what? Let them decide. And a few times you're like, no, I don't want to put the other guy in this situation or I want to fight through this. And really proud of that for, for those guys to be, um, have that mindset. But after a game, tough game, um, we'll have a good chat. Uh, the frustration is there for sure because um, they want to be the best and they want to win and like everyone else. Um, but we'll, we'll go over some video and um, kind of, restructure some things that maybe we can make some changes in but never once would we change their attitude mentality to 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 their game because they i was so so impressed with 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 those guys this year and then the tough situation they've been put in um but yeah those and sometimes you gotta, you just gotta lighten the mood too like we're in a tough situation um you go in just have a bit of fun just chat with them like a you're almost a sounding board at times. You, you just, sometimes you got to sit there and listen, but other times you got to kind of get them going and pump them up or, you know, crack a joke or something and just try to get the, the reset. Cause in, you know, in the reality of life, like uh, 
put things in perspective, they're very fortunate to be where they're at and uh, to do what they do at such a high level. So if you can get back to that mindset and that perspective, then it's definitely, uh, definitely uh, positive for them to and go up and react the right way. No, absolutely. No, that was awesome, Scott. Uh, great presentation, some really good questions, which was uh, awesome to see as well. Great answers. Uh, yeah, just uh, on behalf of uh, the TDs that put this together, big thanks for, for being with us here today. And uh, I'm sure uh, I think we've been kind of, we've had Tim and we've had some of the other technical directors reaching out to the presenters. I think trying to collect some uh, some parts of the presentation or the, the full presentation. So I'm sure they'll be in touch with you to try to try to get this. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll try to pass along some some info from your presentation today to, uh, to everyone who signed up. So uh, yeah, thanks again. That was uh, was fantastic. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend.